All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of O365A. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the classic stream and the new stream. And uh, if you're not aware, at Ignite 2020, Microsoft uh, announced that they're going to be moving into a new stream platform in Q2 um, of the Microsoft calendar, uh, which is now. And so we're going to be talking about uh, all the things that have to uh, come with with that and what you should be planning for and then some of the new features and functionality on the roadmap. So I think, Michael, you're going to start us off today on the uh, recap of the classics. Yeah, thanks, Hab. Yeah, I think the, the big one is, is Microsoft starting to go through the, the process of moving uh, customers mm -hmm. to the new stream. And so we have had a lot of customers that have questions and confusion around the messaging so that we want to kind of just recap what's going on and then uh, so that everyone's kind of understanding the change. So what's happening is Microsoft Stream is becoming a kind of a video experience type product. So it's it's more focused on capturing and playing uh, video files and being able to edit. And then what we're seeing is the storage mechanisms that were in the classic stream is being moved to OneDrive and SharePoint. And this is really treating recordings now just like any other file type. Uh, and, and the reason why Microsoft has made this decision is, you know, all the compliance and information protection functionality that was in, that you're used to on all the other different workloads from Exchange to SharePoint to OneDrive and in Teams, uh, Stream was kind of lacking there. And so instead of, you know, building all that infrastructure and architecture into the Stream product, it was probably a a wiser decision to kind of leverage what was already there. So now we can leverage retention labels and policies, you know, sharing and permissions. So now we can share recordings with guests, uh, you know, uh, use standard experiences that you can, you know, share links from OneDrive and SharePoint. Also, the the meeting recordings are actually being processed quicker. So a Teams meeting recording, you know, have to attest to is is much faster in the rendering now that it's powered by kind of OneDrive and, and SharePoint. Also support for in-region or go-local tenants, as well as multi-geo. So some of this functionality was kind of a, a mandatory item depending on your regulatory requirements. And then there's additional functionality like improve transcription quality and just even the experiences within the, the Microsoft Teams client. So where we're kind of at today is, you know, since October of 2020, customers had the ability to opt in to changing the destination from classic stream to OneDrive. Uh, and, and SharePoint, and uh, at that, you know, from that time, you also had the ability to opt out. So this was done using the uh, set dash CS Teams meeting policy command, and then changing the recording st uh, storage mode, uh, either setting it to OneDrive for business or setting it to Stream. If you didn't touch anything, then you would fall into the realm where Microsoft would be migrating you at this time. Uh, so basically, Microsoft stated that. You know, kind of in January 2020, they were starting the migration of all these customers. So any new recordings would be stored in the, the new stream versus kind of the legacy stream. Now, if you opted out before that migration, uh, if you're an enterprise or a government customer, you have until March, uh, March 2021. And that's when Microsoft will start moving you your new recordings to the, the new platform. And if you're in education, you have until July, July 7th, uh, 2021. So it's probably to kind of pass the next uh, you know, term for, for education. Uh, but so education customers have a little bit more of a timeline to, to migrate. With that, I'll maybe throw it to Kurt to talk about some of the go forward strategies of Stream. Kurt, you're muted. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, so with the, the switch to the new stream, really, as Michael alluded to, this is uh, a strategy where stream gets out of the business of actually having to deal with all the mechanics of the underlying storage mm -hmm. and is meant to be uh, an intelligent video experience on top of all those uh, files and recordings. Um, and in doing so, uh, the new video and audio files um, not considering Microsoft Teams meetings for a minute will be stored in SharePoint. And it's really leveraging the SharePoint platform for the for the storage. Um, there's some benefits to this, as Michael said. Uh, first and foremost, one of the biggest limitations of the old classic stream was the inability to share a Teams meeting recording outside of your organization. So that will be uh, addressed in the new stream. 
and also just um, a better permission, a more cohesive permission model across um, all of the Microsoft Office 365 apps when dealing with these videos stored in the new stream. Uh, there'll be faster rendering, uh, increased quota, and a, a bunch of other uh, big benefits. Um, it does come with some limitations, at least initially. Um, for example, um, English only uh, 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 trans transcriptions of the, of the meeting. And also, um, you won't be able to search those transcriptions right away. But I imagine that'll probably improve over time. And also, in terms of where Teams meetings get res, uh, recorded, uh, for non-channel meetings, the recording will be stored in the OneDrive for business that belongs to the um, person who organized the meeting. And that'll be stored in a top-level recordings folder. Uh, for channel meetings, the recording will be stored in the Teams uh, site documentation library in a folder named recordings. And this can't be changed by admins that that default path of where it's stored is uh, at least right now um, static and can't be changed. So that's sort of the strategy going forward. Uh, Dino, why don't you tell us about some of the challenges this uh, move to the new stream um, imposes on, on people who consume it today? Thanks, Kurt. Yeah, um, I guess one of the biggest challenges is that uh, migrating the data, the current data, the stream classic doesn't really exist today so there's no api yet so anybody looking to like migrate their data uh, would have to manually do it mm -hmm. um so that kind of begs the question well what happens to the existing content in mm -hmm. in the stream that i have today and um you know i think that the, the short answer and the simple answer is that there's no retirement date has been set so nothing happens for now so you, you can rest assured your data is going to be safe um, there's going to be upcoming announcements um, about um, some migration options um, that I'll talk about in a second. So right now, um, you know, you could manually download the content uh, that you say you wanted to move some content out of stream today. You'd have to manually download it and upload it into OneDrive for business. Um, there's a post up on the tech community that we'll uh, share a link to um, on our site, and that's... Uh, the ability to list all your content from stream. Um, so we'll you'll have to check that out. Basically, the, someone wrote a PowerShell to be able to list the content, but unfortunately, there's no way to automate the downloading of all that content yet. Um, Microsoft's announced sort of a paradigm around the migration phases um, around uh, moving from classic stream to the new stream. Um, and so they've, Basically, there's a site, again, we're going to post this um, on our site to talk that talks about what the approach will be to, in terms of migration. Um, and they've carved out these phases to do it. And basically, it'll, it talks about the flexibility of when and where you can move content. Um, things like after a video is migrated, uh, the links and embedded codes to classic stream um, are still going to be preserved, so that, that type of thing. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, it'll update it and move it to the new location, obviously. Um, IT admin capabilities such as settings, reports, things like that, they're going to they're gonna discuss that in the first wave. Um, not all content must move to the new stream, like old videos can remain in Microsoft Stream Classic and then can be deleted over time, so they'll, they'll address that. Uh, using and enhancing existing 365 migration tools for migrating other files into um, 365. So they're going to be talking about uh, some of the tool sets. Um, in, it says that in Q2 of 2021, which is technically now, um, there's going to be a preview of an IT-led admin migration. So we'll keep our eyes and ears open for that and post about it if, uh, if we hear about it. Um, after a video group or channel is moved to the new stream, existing Microsoft uh, stream classic embed codes and links will still work. Kind of talked about that a bit. Um, they'll maintain the redirection logic as well that you have up for up to one year after retirement. That's kind of neat. And then the, I guess the last thing that I have in terms of the challenges are the permissions related um, to all the sharing out of the con the new content and stream. So it's like everything related to uh, when you do a recording or you do anything that ends up uh, from team that ends up in the new stream. So 
there's a massive matrix that uh, was created and we'll post the link to this, but basically uh, um, the link talks about, the, the matrix d describes how and when and where every, like content can be shared and accessed by different users. So we'll wanna check that out. We'll, we'll post the links to all these important uh, uh, articles and, and uh, posts up on our site. So with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Hab and he's gonna talk about the roadmap for the new stream. Yeah, thanks, Dino. So, I mean, I think you touched on some of the things that are going to be covered uh, by the roadmap, like as far as challenges and how to get them fixed. But um, there's actually only four things um, in development on the M365 roadmap. So if you filter by stream. Um, so uh, they are, so there's a new web app that's going to be coming out, a new stream web app that's basically going to be a single pane of glass with regards to all your recordings. So you'll be able to see all of your recordings from OneDrive and Teams and SharePoint uh, and Yammer all in a, in a central location. And then currently today, you don't have the functionality that you can do in Classic Stream where you can um, edit videos and clip, you know, the beginning and the ending and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that new web app is going to bring that functionality. So you'll be able to create videos um, uh, and then share them out as well, right? Uh, next is the uh, improving the streaming quality or the transcoding within the videos. So currently today in the classic one, there's three different transcoding types. There's like large, medium, and small, and each one has like a different frame rate. And depending on the frame rate, you could either play it within the stream console or you actually have to download it. So they're going to be uh, consolidating that and making it into a better stream better uh, transcoding right so a single transcoding for all uh, and as dino mentioned before there's the preview of it admin led uh, migration so you'd be able to test that out if you're the it administrator within your organization um, to validate what that's going to look like obviously uh, by doing that, you'll want to work with your adoption team and your communications team to be able to get that messaging out to your uh, organization with how this is going to be coming out and sort of what are the things that are going to be um, you might have challenges with in that sense. Um, and then another one uh, that is basically blocking the downloads. So um, within a Teams meeting or uh, um, I guess uh, OneDrive or SharePoint site, so if it's a channel meeting or a or one, uh, I guess, a personal meeting, you'd be able to block the ability for users to download the actual video. So I think that was pretty uh, pretty cool. I think that's going to be set by default, but then you can modify the permissions if you want people to be able to get access to that. So that's really good because I guess uh, with sharing externally, you want and you have people within that uh, meeting, you don't want them to have access to that um, video file right away. Maybe you want to share it later on. So that's uh, that's good there. And then there's a there's actually a slew of, um, I guess, features that they posted on their, um, I guess, on their website there that we're going to put in the blog post. Um, and they're basically in a specific order. But some of the main ones that sort of point out to me are like enterprise search for transcripts to be able to search the actual transcripts themselves to pull information. Uh, you're now going to be able, or you will be able to apply governance for the transcripts. So like e-discovery and legal hold. Um, and then I think the other two, so there's automatic expiration of recordings so that your OneDrive doesn't fill up or your SharePoint site doesn't fill up. So you can do some cleaning and then some uh, SharePoint integration with web parts and the video analytics. So you can see who uh, viewed it and average view time and stuff like that, kind of like what you get from a YouTube channel as well. So those are some things from like a future perspective. There's definitely a lot more within that list. I won't go through them all, but we'll definitely post the link up on the blog site so that you can take a look into that further. Um, so that being said, um, has anybody, I guess, between us, have you guys had your customers or any customers move their you know their their recordings to move over from I guess OneDrive uh, to OneDrive and and SharePoint or I mean, I've done it myself but I haven't had a, a customer yet move it I know that they're still waiting for like that migration but I haven't seen anybody 
do it themselves. Yeah, I, I, all my customers have kind of left it at the the Microsoft migrated. Some some customers have set the policies to to force it. I've only had a couple of education customers uh, be the ones to opt out. Uh, so they're waiting until you know the current term of school uh, to finish before they start planning uh, the the migration. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. Is people are leaving it in the old stream, and then they just, they just flip the recording new ones to be stored in OneDrive for business. Um, question, question for Michael. Because it's a policy, I've only seen people set it at the global level. But can you apply that uh, at the user level too? Do you know, yeah, there is a, a meeting policy that could be applied to a scope group. Um, I haven't come into many tenants that are actually splitting out the. The team's meeting policy unless they want to allow recording versus not allow recording so typically it's being set at the global level right yeah i haven't seen any um any of my customers uh, <clears throat> ask me or um I'm, that i'm aware of that that have moved i mean i think there's just so much um coming down the pipe that possibly some of this is being lost and um you know, hopefully that Microsoft will do some more announce announcements to create awareness around it. But um, yeah, or or it might just be there's governance reasons they're just not ready to deal with yet, and uh, maybe they haven't set up the governance. So um, yeah, there, there, there's some happens. user awareness and user training that sort of needs to happen too. Mm -hmm. I know a couple people that were holding off just because they want to make their users aware that this change was happening. Yeah, for sure. It's big enough that, you know, it's people are going to be asking where the recordings are going. And um, I mean, it's know, a good change in the right change. Right? Yeah. But, he, but he, there's there's that. Sorry, Dina, but there's that, like you said, Kurt, there's that education piece because mm -hmm. you are going to be losing some functionality that you get in stream today. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it will come. But I mean, it's the right change. Sorry, Dina, go ahead. No, I was just going to say um, this is something similar in that, you know, organizations that are that haven't really taken the plunge into teams yet that are wondering about recordings and where all that stuff's happening. It's kind of the right time because now they can deal with address all this stuff, as you as you talked about, like, it, it, you know, because there's great compliance controls in Office 365 today. Now all that's just going to follow suit. Whereas before, like recordings were kind of like, well, they're in stream and, you know, they're they're kind of on their own. <laughs> so if you were a bank or somebody that had to deal with some with compliance or regulatory things, then, you know, you, you would have basically had to turn off recordings or, you know, deal with them a different way. But now now you'll just be able to address them uh, without having to really think about it. If you've if you've set all those options, uh, they'll just follow whatever you've done in terms of OneDrive and, and everything else. Right cool. I mean, that's great. I mean, I think definitely a lot of really uh, good things coming out. I think we talked about that it's the right step ahead um, for that because now I think we talked offline, Michael was saying, you know, like, you know, we can focus on all the cool stuff because all of the compliance and sharing and everything like that's already taken care of, right, with the, the platform that it's on. So hopefully, um, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, we'll get all the, that cool functionality in as soon as possible. But uh, I think it was a great session to share with everyone today. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening in. And we'll catch you on our next episode. Thanks. See you, everybody.